Praise the Lord, everyone, and welcome to the New Covenant Apostolic Church of Holly, Michigan. The title of our message today is called Glorification, the Hope of Every Christian. The letters in the word Bible, they stand for the following words, B for basic, I for instructions, B for before, L for leaving, and E for earth. In, a, in short, the word Bible means basic instructions before leaving earth. The Bible is the story of redemption and salvation for the people who believe in and who obey God. It starts out with the fall of man in the Garden of Eden and the ensuing death that came upon all mankind as a result. Genesis chapter 2, verse 16 and 17. And the Lord God commanded the man, saying, of every tree of the garden thou mayest freely eat, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil thou shalt not eat of it. For in the day that thou eatest thereof thou shalt surely die. As we read through the Bible, we can see through time and events God choosing a particular people. These people were not chosen by race creed, or ethnicity, but by covenant connection. Notice Deuteronomy chapter 7, 6 through 9, and verse 11, what the scriptures say. For thou art an holy people unto the Lord thy God. The Lord thy God hath chosen thee to be a special people unto himself, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, hath the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand, and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him, and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments and the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this day, to do them. In Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 and 5, the Bible said this, In the third month, when the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then Ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for all the earth is mine. And he took the book of the covenant and read in the audience of the people, and they said, All that the Lord has said will we do and be obedient. And Moses took the blood and sprinkled it on the people and said, Behold the blood of the covenant which the Lord hath made with you concerning all these words. God made a promise with Abraham. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 7, this is what the scripture said. And I will establish my covenant between me and thee, and thy seed after thee in their generations, for an everlasting covenant to be a God unto thee, and to thy seed after thee. This promise that God made to Abraham was the promise of an everlasting covenant through his seed of Jesus Christ, which was eternal life. Notice Galatians chapter 3, verse 16. 
Now to Abraham and his seed were the promises made. He saith not, and to seeds, as of many, but as of one, and to thy seed, which is Christ. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, this is what the scripture said. And this is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. In Romans chapter 6 and verse 23, the scripture makes this statement. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. This covenant that God made with the nation of Israel at Mount Sinai was broken. It was broken by them. Isaiah chapter 24 and verse 5, the Bible says this. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. After many years of backsliding and failures, the judgment of God was pronounced on the nation of Israel. Jesus the Messiah, He was to be the enforcer of God's judgment on Israel for that broken covenant. Notice Daniel chapter 9 verse 24. Seventy weeks are determined upon thy people and upon thy holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sins and to make reconciliation for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness and to seal up the vision and prophecy and to anoint the most holy. The judgment of God was on its way towards Israel. Notice in John chapter 9 verse 39 what Jesus said. And Jesus said, For judgment I am come into this world that they which see not might see, and that they which see might be made blind. Eschatology is the study of the last day's generation from A.D. 30 to A.D. 70 of the first century. At the culmination of the Old Covenant, Jesus established a new everlasting covenant with whosoever would believe and obey the gospel message of Jesus Christ. Through belief and obedience, the born-again believer would receive eternal life. It was on the day of Pentecost in the book of Acts chapter 2 that the very first message of the gospel of Jesus Christ was preached in Jerusalem almost 2,000 years ago. Acts chapter 2, verse 37, 39, this is what the scripture said. Now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, Men and brethren, what shall we do? Then Peter said unto them, Repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost for the promises unto you and to your children and to all that are far off even as many as the Lord our God shall call. From the day of Pentecost the apostles went and preached the gospel message throughout the then known world. Jesus told the apostles that some of them would still be alive when he returned in A.D. 70. Matthew chapter 16, verse 27 and 28. For the Son of Man shall come in the glory of his Father with his angels, and then he shall reward every man according to his works. Verily I say unto you, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the Son of Man coming in His kingdom. In Luke chapter 9, verse 26 and 27, this is what the Bible said. For whosoever shall be ashamed of me and of my words, of him 
shall the Son of Man be ashamed when he shall come in his own glory and in his Father's and of the holy angels. But I tell you of a truth, there be some standing here which shall not taste of death till they see the kingdom of God. He also told them that they would not have gone over all of the cities of Israel by the time that he would return. Matthew chapter 10, verse 22 and 23. This is what the Bible said. And ye shall be hated of all men for my name's sake. But he that endureth to the end shall be saved. But when they persecute you in this city, flee you into another. For verily I say unto you, ye shall not have gone over the cities of Israel till the Son of Man be come. Everywhere the apostles went, they told the people that Jesus was going to return in their lifetime, in their generation, before their generation ended. Mark chapter 13, verse 28 to 31, the scripture said this, Now learn a parable of the fig tree, when her branch is yet tender, and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is near. So in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. What the apostles preached and taught so impacted people's lives that they sold their homes, their lands, and their possessions and brought the money to the apostles for distribution to every man according to their need. Acts chapter 4, verse 33 to 35, this is what the Bible said. And with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. And great grace was upon them all. Neither was there any among them that lacked. For as many as were possessors of lands or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold and laid them down at the apostles' feet. And distribution was made unto every man according as he had need. Many churches were established in the first century by the Apostle Paul. Paul established churches in Rome, Corinth, Galatia, Ephesus, Philippi, Colossae, and in Thessalonica. The apostles wrote letters and epistles to encourage and to strengthen those believers, to prepare them for the soon glorious return of the Lord Jesus Christ. As they waited for their departure, we can read many scriptures that describe their expectation of the soon return of Jesus. Paul said in the book of Philippians chapter 3 verse 20, this is what the scripture said. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. They were waiting for the Lord's return. In 1 Corinthians chapter 1 verse 7 and 8, this is what we read. So that ye come behind in no gift, waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, who shall also confirm you unto the end, that ye may be blameless in the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. We read here that they were waiting for the return of Jesus. We read in Hebrews chapter 9, verse 26 to 20, 28, that they were looking for and waiting for His appearance in order to complete their salvation. Notice what it said. For then must He often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath He appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of Himself. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this, the judgment. So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many, 
and unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. This means that their salvation was not complete until Jesus returned in the year A.D. 70 of the first century. The Apostle Peter also wrote in 2 Peter chapter 3, verses 13 to 15, to his audience of living, breathing people who were alive at the time of his writing 2,000 years ago. This is what it said. Nevertheless, we, according to his promise, look for new heavens and a new earth, wherein dwelleth righteousness. Wherefore, beloved, seeing that ye look for such things, be diligent that ye may be found of him in peace, without spot and blameless, and account that the long suffering of our Lord is salvation, even as our beloved brother Paul, also according to the wisdom given unto him, hath written unto you. He also wrote that the end of the Old Covenant was at hand, and the time had come for God's judgment. Notice 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 7 and verse 17. But the end of all things is at hand. Be therefore sober and watch unto prayer. For the time is come that judgment must begin at the house of God. And if it first begin at us, what shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? The time had arrived for the judgment of God to begin at the house of God. Notice Hebrews chapter 8 verse 13. In that he saith a new covenant, he hath made the first old. Now that which decayeth and waxeth old is ready to vanish away. The old covenant was coming to an end. In AD 70, one covenant ended and a new eternal everlasting covenant was beginning. In reading the scriptures, you can see the importance of understanding what audience relevance is. The scriptures were written to a first century audience about the things that were taking place and about the events getting ready to happen in their lifetime and then their generation. Matthew chapter 24, verse 33 and 34, the Bible said this, So likewise ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. And in the book of Mark, chapter 13, verse 29 and 30, Notice what the scriptures say. So ye in like manner, when ye shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, that this generation shall not pass till all these things be done. Then we find it again recorded in the book of Luke, chapter 21, verse 31 and 32. This is what the Bible said. So likewise ye, when ye see these things come to pass, know ye that the kingdom of God is nigh at hand. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass away till all be fulfilled. The early church in the first century, they were living in the expectation that when the Lord Jesus returned, they would be changed. They would go to be with Him forever. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 50-54, through 54, the Bible said this, Now this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither doth corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. 
For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. In Romans chapter 8 and verse 11, notice what the scripture said. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies by his spirit that dwelleth in you. And in the book of Philippians chapter 3, verse 20 and 21, this is what the scripture said. For our conversation is in heaven, from whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall change our vile body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body, according to the working whereby he is able even to subdue all things unto himself. In the book of Thessalonians, chapter 4, verse 17, Notice what the scripture said. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. All of the believers knew that when Jesus returned, they would receive their glorified immortal body. We just read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verses 13 through 18 of this event that took place. Please remember, the we in these verses was them 2,000 years ago. They were not us today. For us today who have been born again, it is at physical death that we will receive our glorious body. Notice 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1, what the Bible said. For we know that if our earthly home of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God and a house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. Peter said that he would be a partaker of the glory that would be revealed at Jesus' coming. In 1 Peter chapter 5, verses 1 and 4, this is what the scripture said. The elders which are among you I exhort who am also an elder, and a witness of the long sufferings of Christ, and also a partaker of the glory that shall be revealed. And when the chief shepherd shall appear, ye shall receive a crown of glory that fadeth not away. Paul the Apostle told the church at Colossae that when Jesus appeared, they would appear with him in glory. Colossians 3 and verse 4. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall you also appear with him in glory. Paul also stated in Romans chapter 8 verse 17, as heirs, they would be glorified together with Christ. Notice what it said. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together. In 1 John chapter 3 and verse 2, the Bible said this, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him. For we shall see him as he is. The scripture said that as sons of God, when Jesus appeared, they would be like him, having a glorified body like his. In conclusion, the hope of every Christian is their glorification. Glorification is the distinction extended to born again Christians through the obedience to the gospel of Jesus Christ. It is at physical death that this corruptible becomes incorruptible, and this mortal becomes 
a new immortal glorified body. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 10, the Bible said this, But is now made manifest by the appearing of our Savior Jesus Christ, who hath abolished death, and has brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. It is through the gospel of Jesus Christ that we receive immortality. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 1 and 2, the Bible said this, For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle were dissolved, we have a building of God in house not made with hands, eternal in the heavens. For in this we groan, earnestly desiring to be clothed upon with our house which is from heaven. The church in the first century looked for their glorification to occur when the Lord Jesus Christ returned in the year A.D. 70. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 51 to 53, the Bible makes this statement. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. This is what today is commonly called the rapture. Now, it is at physical death that we, as born-again believers, will receive our glorification and an abundant entrance into eternal life. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 11. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And in 1 John chapter 2, verse 25, this is what the Bible said. And this is the promise that He has promised us, even eternal life. This concludes our lesson today, glorification, the hope of every Christian. At the end of this lesson, you'll find a link to an alphabetized playlist of all of our Bible studies. Please take the time to use this resource. It's there to share with you. If you've enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a like. If you enjoyed the content on our channel, make sure to subscribe by hitting the bell icon for notification when we upload new videos. If you have a question or a comment, you can email us at the New Covenant Apostolic Church at gmail.com or you can call us at 248-459-2130. Thank you and God bless you. I've been crucified with Christ. I've been crucified with Christ. I know.